So Rogue's Crosshair 8 Extreme is Asus' most expensive AMD motherboard uh, they can offer. It, it, it showcases all of its engineering uh, know-how and skills and the latest improvements in the industry. And when Asus says Extreme, you better believe it. The Crosshair 8 Extreme comes two years after the X570 chipset was released, but it also gives two years worth of improvement, producing one of the most powerful feature-rich motherboard to ever grace this channel. And I won't sugarcoat it, this motherboard will blow your mind and nothing else. Because one might argue that at $900, this motherboard should be able to blow your... So ROG is Asus um, premium gaming family, obviously, and the extreme version, well, it's most extremist products. Once you spend 900 bucks on a motherboard, the very least it can do is to do whatever you want it to do. Unleashing every bit of potential from all your components and the Crosser 8 Extreme does just that. Now, starting with the obvious. We're dealing with an E80X motherboard, meaning three centimeter wider than your everyday motherboard. It comes with no less than eight PCB layers, two more than usually found on PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard. And that is a good thing, but uh, despite Impacting the manufacturing costs quite drastically, having eight PCB layers allows an almost silent PCIe signaling, something which will positively impact every uh, uh, bandwidth related features of this motherboard, either storage or back IO wise. On its verso, the board comes with an impressive RGB boarded backplate, which not only protects back circuits, but also serves as a radiating plate thanks to two millimeter thick thermopads placed on our VRM and chipset soldered points. About the very best foundation any motherboard could very well hope. And a special note for the angle plug situated on the south side of our board. Not only does it look good, but it really improves cabling management. Big, big Asus kudos for this. CPU socket wise, it is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting anything from second to fifth generation Ryzen processors. A large compatibility bed, which definitely Intel might want to learn something from. Now note that the PCA 4.0 abilities of this motherboard will be unlocked uh, when coupled with a Ryzen 3000 and above processor, which will effectively double uh, the motherboard bandwidth from one gigabyte to two gigabyte per second per PCIe lane. Now VRM wise, well, there is no other words. It is extreme. We got 20, 20, 90 amps power stages organized in nine parallel phases plus two suck direct phases. Only that, that is 1620 amps worth of power to Chernobyl, you poor processor. It's more than you'll need to overclock or extreme overclock, whatever you're gonna have uh, to throw at it. Obviously with that much power, heat might have been a problem, but Asus engineering team used every trick on the book to keep it cool as ice. First, having 20 power stages translate in a larger power spread, avoiding overheating our individual power stages. But most importantly, we have this magnificent all steel pipe connected VRM block, which is in all and for all the most massive of its class. Just look at how tall this thing is. And that uber block VRM to back IO, there is nothing here but condensed steel, so all topped by a never ending, deliciously radiating roof. Woof woof. Looking under the chokes and power stages have a full thermo padded contact for better heat evacuation. Now with the serially stressed 16 core Ryzen CPU, the VRM never went beyond 50 degrees Celsius, making this not only the most powerful VRM on the Ryzen market, but also the coolest one. I mean, this thing is more efficient than a Frenchman preparing for its first labor strike. And I'm telling you right now, we are really good at it. RAM wise, the Crosshair 8 Extreme supports up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 in a dual channel configuration, clocking up to a very fast 5.1 gigahertz, about what other ROG Crosshair motherboard uh, can deliver. But we also have Asus very own Optimum 3, which should help us reach this 5 gigahertz higher clock on the right kind of memory model. Now, storage-wise, being an extreme also means going a little 
little bit overboard, just a tiny bit. We have no less than five, five M.2 solid state drive sticks, all of which are PCIe 4 enabled and can potentially all transfer individually up to 64 gigabit worth of data every single second. That's 320 gigabit per second of transfer just only on the M.2 solid state drive storage. Just, just let this thing sink in. Three on the logic board and two on the DIM.2 model. That's simply unprecedented and where the eight PCB layers shows itself crucial for the safe running of that much bandwidth. Now notice a little chip here. This is a dedicated packet switch, which is really important in keeping uh, all that data neat, organized and Pretty. Now, I also want to note the ASUS Q latch locking mechanism, which is some of my favorite small yet important development we have seen in the past 12 months. Obviously, M.2 solid state drives can get really hot really quickly, but thankfully, all of our five M.2 solid state drives have been equipped with large thermo padded heat sinks. And when I say large, I I mean, look at the things. This is insane. Even our DIM.2 sticks come with their own dedicated thermo padded plates. Obviously, no thermo throttling spaghetti monsters here. Expansion wise, we got three PCIe exports, one bachelor and two 16 slots. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU has 16 PCIe lanes. Therefore, this is where you want your GPU to be placed for optimal performances. In a dual GPU configuration, both of our 16 PCIe slots will be sharing bandwidth in an 8x8 PCIe lane configuration. Since this is a proper multiple GPU board, both of our PCIe slots have been metallically reinforced and fully support NVIDIA's SLI or AMD's cross fire standards. Most importantly, all these PCIe lanes are PCIe 4.0 enabled, meaning that you got some serious bandwidth coursing through this PCIe expansion slot, which makes it uh, uh, quite future-proof, which is always a good thing. SATA-wise, because I do need to mention them, we got six SATA 3.0 plugs, all able to swap data up to our slow yet reliable 6 gigabit per second. Awesome. Now, back IO-wise, first let me know the presence of a non-removable backplate, fully, fully expected at this price range. Actually, um, I also expected some uh, gold plating at that price range. Now, starting from the left, we got our BIOS and clear CMOS buttons for some easy troubleshooting and CPU-less BIOS update, a Wi-Fi 6E dual band adapter able to transmit on the cleaner 6 GHz radio spectrum, 8 USB 3.2 second generation plugs all able to vomit 10 gigabit worth of data. Basically, all the lower USB standards have been swallowed by the extreme to give us that, that insane 8, 8 USB 3.2 second generation plugs. Next, we have a couple of LAN plugs, one of which can handle data swaps up to 10 gigabit per second, really pretty premium stuff and having uh, two LAN plugs will do a lot, especially for our streamers out there. Now we also have two 1.4 display ports in, which are linked to our Thunderbolt 4 plugs right there. Now in short, you will need to connect your GPU to the display ports and the video signal will get out through the Thunderbolt 4 uh, whilst it still can provide up to 40 gigabit per second uh, worth of data transfer and, and yeah, uh, feed two different 4K uh, screen each Thunderbolt 4. So that's, that's four screens output in, in effect. Obviously making this motherboard especially great for uh, content creators who would want to do some crazy configuration. Now do not uh, confuse this thing with integrated graphics outputs because as in all other Crosser 8 uh, uh, motherboard, you don't have integrated graphics output. You will need a video card no matter what to see a picture out of this motherboard, which again, when you're paying a thousand bucks for a motherboard, you shouldn't be so surprised. And finally, and thankfully, we have the best integrated audio solution money can buy, namely the A-Channel ALC4082 brand new codec from Realtek. Obviously, the, the tip of the spear when it comes to audio codecs. And, and again, 
which will benefit heavily from having 8 PCB layers since left and right audio channel have been traced on their own dedicated PCB layers and, and uh, protect them from you know statics and reinforcing their insulation. Audio playback and recording is simply flawless. Oh, and I almost forgotten, audio jacks are backlitted. How isn't this relevant? But there is more. The ROG Crosser 8 Extreme comes with a ROG Clavis. What is a Clavis? I can hear you scream. What is a Clavis Laurent? Well, it's a DAC, meaning a portable sound blaster. You just plug it in any good old type C and you're set. You can then use your loyal analog headset on it and turn it into a noise cancelling amplified premium gaming ear candy. Now that's some really cool audio add-on. But knowing that it does cost about 130 bucks individually, I mean, and you're paying $900 on the motherboard, is it something you really want to invest in? Like, you already have a great 4082 audio codec, so uh, why? You know, I'll talk more about this in, in the conclusion, but potentially the only little disagreement I have, an ace, I have with Asus on this. Now, overall, what do you want me to say? Obviously, this Bakayo rocks knocks you right out of your socks. It has about 200 gigabit per second worth of bandwidth output, which is crazy. It's perfect for gamers, streamers, even audio content creators. I mean, it's the best I've ever seen personally, but again, at that price tag, the Bakayo had better been extreme. Now, chipset wise, well, nothing groundbreaking here. It's it's still our good old PCIe 4.0 X570 chipset with a noticeable uh, evolution. The absence of a chipset fan, which did equip all earlier X570 power boards. Instead, we have this mastodont of a heat shield, which does a superb job at keeping our boiling 11 watts chipset below 45 degrees Celsius. I mean, again, look at it. It's probably the best looking part of the entire motherboard, if you ask me. And if you are here, you are asking me. Now, moving on to our front panel connectors. We have two second generation plugs, great for monitoring, two five gigabit third generation plugs, which have been placed in a 90 degree angle for easier access, and not one, but two 10 gigabit type C front panel connectors, which is pure and distilled luxury. Now, cooling wise, we have no less than eight connectors, including two dedicated water pumps. Now, let's note that our PWM fans are hydranodes connectors or hydranodes. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Meaning that you can individually control up to five PWM fans per connector feature first introduced on the Maximus 13 Hero motherboard, which is still my daily driver till this day. Obviously, everything you need uh, to run and operate the most intricate, enthusiastic, friendly cooling system, including dual loops, custom water cooling monsters. And talking of water cooling, we got all the additional fail-safe features that liquid cooling demands, such as our leak sensors and flow sensor. Finally, in the unlikely case anyone would want to cool this thing with liquid nitrogen, we do have all the usual LN2 switch allowing direct access to several reset and reboot modes to bypass overclocking settings. Now troubleshooting wise, we got everything available and imaginable. Starting with an easy debugger for our first aid debugging, a QR code screen for refined troubleshooting, and a rather long and high definition LED screen which can show a bunch of uh, useful information, including CPU temperatures. Now, we also have other button and switches, including our start and programmable reset buttons. In short, the Crosshair 8 Extreme is obsessing on getting you out of trouble and allowing you or giving you uh, an obscene amount of tweaking power to get and operate the most ludicrous build you can have in your mind your mind. Obviously, this would not be an extreme or even a rug motherboard without an eccentric amount of RGB. Starting with a very good looking and precise backlitted rug logo on our chipset, another equally impressive under our VRM roofing, and a gorgeous addressable RGB strip sandwich between the PCB and the backplate. And finally, no less than four RGB connectors three of which are addressable. In short, enough blinking lights to uh, home grow your own epilepsy. 
In conclusion, at about 900 bucks, a Rod Crosser 8 Extreme wears well its name. We got that 1800 amps 20 phases VRM, an unprecedented amount of PCIe 4 components, going from a mind blowing 5 M.2 solid state drive to 12. 3.2 USB plugs. It's a rich configuration dressed by luxurious cooling components, which do an absolute wonderful job in keeping all of our motherboard elements cool as it can be. And the list goes on. Simply said, Asus went out of its way to get the best and the most out of the market and cram the shit out of it in this motherboard. And obviously, this motherboard will be the best of the best of the best in whatever you're gonna do with it, either gaming, streaming, video editing, you know, Chernobylian nuclear uh, physicist, uh, but some might say, some sick minds might say that the Crosser 8 Hero will deliver 99% of the performances of this motherboard for about half the price. Guess maybe. And if the Extreme really uh, wanted to be truly special and be worth the extra cost, it should have brought in more enthusiast-friendly accessories than a fan hub expansion and a DAC audio add-on, which again costs a lot of money, but once you have this really good Realtek 4082, comes kind of useless. I was more looking for, say, a monoblock, a water monoblock, like I've seen on the Maximus 9 Extreme, or even a video capture card. I mean, it's been done before, but these points are only valid if you were looking for value in this motherboard, which is obviously not the point. This is a luxury item, which aims to please not only the most enthusiast amongst us, but the die-hard Asus fan as well, which by the way, have no problem shedding extra money just for the privilege to witness what Asus has done best that year. And for that, the Rock Crosser 8 Extreme delivers beyond expectations. And that's the truth. Thank you.